Today, I want to talk to you about ammonia and pH and how they kind of go together. But first, I want to show you the rescued Oscars. Yeah, you need to see them. Healing and looking lush. Let me tell you about my best friend. <laughs> so, the albino is ornery as all get out. Definitely, let me look at this. Tank's looking good. Everybody's looking lush. This guy really didn't have much issues when he came in. Um, he seems a little bit more toned down in terms of his personality. Look at him. Hi! Still blind. Not completely, but struggles to find some food. This guy or gal, which I'm still unsure of, is healing very, very nicely. Um, had some pretty, pretty epic cuts. Oh, I see you hiding. Had some pretty epic cuts on the front of the head, the side of the body, from being in an absolute horrible bucket and a small tank with a 14 plus inch pleco. Absolutely insane. Some of you may be thinking, however, why is he putting more fish in this area when he had to take some out? Well, of course, as I was starting to get everything out, we then covered part of the wall to help insulate it, and it has helped. It hasn't changed the fact that it's really hot in here, but for these guys, it is pretty, pretty good. Hi, I'm Dr. I Kept a Tank Once. Before I get into it, let me say that by no means am I a scientist. Public service announcement, I'm not an expert. I don't pretend to be. I'm simply giving you information that I understand to hopefully help you better understand how pH and ammonia work so that you can understand maybe why some of these things came to be in the aquarium hobby and maybe why you're struggling today with some of the things that are in your aquarium. So everyone knows that ammonia is deadly to fish, right? Or the wrong pH will not allow your fish to thrive. We know that, especially with African cichlids. More so with African cichlids, we have a tougher time to understand the correlation between pH and ammonia. And I'm hoping to fix some of those correlations in terms of how we understand them and how we fix them uh, within the African cichlid community. Outside of the African cichlid community, it's not as drastic. And that's where it gets funny. Because when we test ammonia or we test pH, it's only telling some of the story. For instance, African cichlids like a higher pH, 7.8-ish, right? Well, at seven, pH is neutral. So with one ppm of ammonia at 7.0 pH, the ammonia is converted to ammonium, rendering, rendering it inert almost. Not going to harm your fish at all. Yes, you heard that right. But let's flip the script. Move the pH up the scale, 1 ppm to 7.8, 8.0, 9, it becomes fatal to your fish. So at 7, 1 ppm does nothing. The same 1 ppm at 8, 9 pH, fatal, 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 fatal. To give you a better understanding of this, at 7.0 and you move to 8.0, the ammonia at the same level is 10 times more powerful at 8.0 than it is at 7.0. So this is where we run into some problems because in African cichlids, we have a higher pH. So that's why we get ammonia is bad. You gotta get it out. You gotta get it out now. Now ammonia present in your water could be a lot of different things, but one of the things you really have to look out for, follow me, is the fluctuation of your pH throughout the day or throughout the week. And that's why I think water changes became a weekly thing or every two weeks from a lot of hobbyists pre the time you and I got into the aquarium hobby. And this was because it allowed us to stabilize the pH by taking water out and putting water in. Because changing pH down is much more difficult than moving pH up, but over the course of time, pH will start to fluctuate and then start to drop. So everybody looks for that buffering technique, water changes. That allows to put in the pH that you already know is going in there. That's why people tell you to test your water, going back into that aquarium so that you understand the relation of pH to everything else. Get it? The cycling process, ammonia, nitrite, to nitrate. The reason why I wanted to do this video is because I was talking to a few people and they said prior to African cichlids becoming uh, readily available in the hobby, there really wasn't much talk about ammonia. There really wasn't much talk about 
bacteria in a bottle or putting bacteria in a bottle and then getting your tank cycle. There wasn't much of this and there wasn't much issue because most of the fish readily available were at seven or below in terms of pH. But when African cichlids were brought into the United States, it changed the whole ball game because well, pH is higher. The mineral content is higher. Therefore, any amount of ammonia becomes dead, maybe not instantaneously, but definitely fatal through issues like oxygenation, liver, bladder, you name it. It'll start to break down your fish and potentially ruin your fish's immune system and causing other issues like ick or Popeye or dropsy. But the good news is, is you have a bacteria in your aquarium called nitrosinomas, I believe is the name, and they eat ammonia. Well, they convert it to nitrite and then the bacteria converts nitrite to nitrate. So how do we fix all this? How do we prevent our aquariums from being subjected to high ammonia content. If we can't lower our pH for African cichlids, then how could we mitigate or help ourselves in the future from potentially killing our fish from ammonia? Well, it's pretty easy. Water changes, good filtration, do not overfeed, do not overstock, test, test often, and make sure your aquarium is stable. That's it. Now, some other facts that you may want to know is, you know, most people, I shouldn't say most, I don't know many people that have an aquarium under 6.0 in terms of pH. And a little note to each other, uh, the nitrifying bacteria doesn't exist under 6.0. So uh, when you're sitting in that 6.5 to 7, uh, that's a really good range where ammonia typically is not very fatal because it's converted to ammonium. And that's really neat. But when you get above 7, that neutral pH, which you start moving into African cichlids and some other fish, uh, salt water, uh, and then African cichlids mainly, you start to see that ammonia becomes fatal even in the smallest parts. However, don't freak out. Just learn to control the system. Find out what's causing the ammonia spike. And we've already went over it. Water changes, filtration, too many fish, too much feeding. Maybe you have a ton of decorations in your aquarium and you've got some food that you don't see that's causing the ammonia spike or a fish that has died and is sitting behind a rock that you haven't moved in years and you've got ammonia present. Or maybe you're getting ammonia out of the tap. Does this make sense? So pH, it will fluctuate. You can help it by doing some water changes and you can prevent your fish from being subjected to any sort of ammonia issues by taking the normal precautions. You also have to remember that many things could affect your pH in your system. Aeration, fish tank, decorations, substrate, temperature, and nitrite level are just some of the things that it can affect your pH. Now remember, the higher temperature you go, the lower your oxygen in your aquarium is, and the chances are that your pH is moving higher and your ammonia level will be even more fatal than where it sits currently. So let's recap. Ammonia and pH do have a correlation and we need to understand them as African cichlid keepers. Now I'm not saying if you just jumped into the hobby that you immediately have to know 100% of the things, but I am saying if you successfully wanna keep fish and you wanna keep fish healthy and thriving, you're going to have to do a few extra things. You're going to have to read some books or understand how the fish thrive through some of the processes that happen in your aquarium. So let's recap on pH and ammonia. pH, when sitting at 7.0 and your ammonia is at 1.0, 0 ppm is converted to ammonium. So typically it's not going to harm your fish. But when you move over onto the right side of the spectrum into African cichlid territory, you start to realize that that becomes fatal rather quickly. The higher the temperature, the lower the chance of oxygen, the higher the ammonia, and the greater risk you have of losing fish. So how do we fix it? Water changes. Stop overfeeding. Stop adding so many fish. Start properly filtering your aquarium. Doesn't matter if you have a background, doesn't matter if you have rocks, all the process remain the same. Sometimes there's a little bit more work that goes into fixing or mitigating any of the issues caused by pH or ammonia. So while some people will say, eh, don't worry about numbers, numbers in terms of science will play a huge role in your aquarium, especially on a smaller scale. So while somebody can get away with an HOB on the back of their tank and others will rock five, six canisters, that's up to them. That just means that the chances of them doing water changes are less and the chances of their pH and ammonia reacting together through the process of nitrifying bacteria is far less quick than what it would be with a person with a hang on the back. All of this changes if you have plants. All of this changes based on photosynthesis. I'm simply giving you the information that I know of on the easiest scale. So when it comes down to it, don't worry about pH and ammonia in terms of frightening right away. It's like when people freak out about venomous snakes and sharks. 
500,000 people die of mosquitoes every year. Every day, more mosquitoes kill people than sharks kill in 100 years. We have to understand that even though there's a scare tactic there, we need to pay attention, but we also need to understand that if we don't overreact, we will make sure that we do the right things at the right time to help our fish continue thriving. I hope you found this information useful. I hope you can store it away and use it at a later date. And if you're watching this 10 years from now, I don't think science will have changed. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a part of the fish hobby. So with all that information, go out there you. Go out there and seize your aquarium. Make your fish happy. Enjoy their colors and their swimmies and their mouths and beautiful scales. You know what's next. Ah!